the impacts that AI is having on what it means to be a citizen are really going to be transformative. They're already having a big impact, and we see that growing over time. And I think those changes are really inspiring. So I wanted to share a few examples with you. A lot of the work that I do is in the civic technology space, and I'm really inspired by these range of applications. And if you haven't encountered them before, if you think of AI's impacts on democracy as primarily about deep fakes and spreading misinformation, you might find these really exciting and inspiring too. So one of the first tools that really took off in this area is a tool called Polis, Pol.is, which has been used by governments around the world for many years now to facilitate large-scale discussions, to capture structured data and feedback from constituents about policy, and to organize and report that feedback using machine learning, which is fantastic. There are newer tools that use large language models for a similar purpose. These are tools like Talk to the City and Unanimous AI and Cortico that governments have started using around the world to facilitate large-scale conversations about policy change, and not just to collect structured feedback like you might do in a survey, but to actually synthesize individual responses, qualitative feedback, specific proposals and recommendations from many, many individuals in a way that can be delivered as recommendations to policymakers. Here in Massachusetts, my colleagues and I are developing a platform called Maple, uh, the Massachusetts Platform for Legislative Engagement. It's online at mapletestimony.org, and it's focused on making our state legislature here in Massachusetts much more accessible to, much more engaged with constituents when it's developing policy, when it's writing law. And we found AI really useful in that work. One of the things that we've done is taken the thousands of bills that are filed in the Massachusetts legislature every year and summarized all of them so that they're much easier for people to understand and so that policymaking is much more accessible. So a lot of these tools for facilitating democracy, facilitating citizenship, sound pretty familiar now. We're used to seeing AI being used to summarize information, to help people communicate, to help synthesize feedback. But what's going to happen next, we think, is much more novel and interesting. We talk in our book about proposals like one from Switzerland called Voting Twice, which involves everyone in a democracy having their own AI representative, their own AI avatar, that casts a ballot for them in an initial non-binding vote before citizens, actual human voters, have access to all those results and take their own vote a second time in a binding resolution. We think practices like that are going to become more common over time. In our last video, I'm going to go into the third big idea of our series, which is all about how the biggest risks associated with AI come from how it's being used to concentrate power in democracies today.